Hello everybody. My friend David Bennett wanted me to do a little tutorial on how to prepare the a feather turkey feather quill for uh, strumming your dulcimer with. And um, but before I do that, I wanted to show a little about the turkey quills and how to prepare them and stuff. But because there's the primary feathers and the secondary feathers. And I'm going to turn the camera around here and I'll show you what the primary feathers look like. These are the primary feathers. You can see that they've got a... It's like one side of them don't have much feather on it. This would be a left wing And this one would be a right wing feather. <clears throat> and they've just got a little bit on on each side. And that don't mean, I don't think that means very much to a dulcimer player, whether it's the primary or the secondary, which is what these feathers are. The secondary feathers. And you notice they have almost as much feather on both sides of the quill whereas the primary feathers only have a, a little bit on one side of the quill. But like I say, I don't think it means much to a dulcimer player other than uh, I don't think I don't think the primary the quills and the primary feathers are any more tough tougher or last longer or whatever than the secondary quills do but the difference is as you can see the secondary feathers you can see they're, they're arched one way but then when you look at them from this side they've got a slight curve like that one this one curves to the left this one curves to the right and that causes a little bit of problem when you're strumming because one side of it like this one is, when you're strumming, you can see that curve, it'll want to hook under your strings when you're, when you're strumming. But the, the primary feathers, the quill is mostly straight from one end to the other, although it, it does have an arch in it, but you only have that one arch to deal with when you're strumming. And the uh, other thing to keep in mind with these feathers is I see a lot of people in the old time videos and stuff, they just leave the feather on and they'll use the big end, which if that's how you like to play it, that's fine, but <clears throat> with the, with lice and personally I wouldn't want to be holding something in my hand all the time that may have lice on it. I'm sure you could probably wash them or disinfect them some way to get the lice off of them. And the other thing you have to be aware of is the, uh, the part of the quill that goes into the skin you can see that's a little bit of blood and stuff on the tip of that and with bird flu and stuff like that that goes around first thing we see especially with kids is if they've got a crayon or ink pen it goes in their mouth and grown-ups do the same thing so keep that in mind with some stuff like that if you use a feather quill for strumming you could uh, get something or catch something off of them. All right, I'm going to flip the camera back around and show you how to uh, strip the feather. Some people that do trim the quill down, they'll use scissors to trim it off. And I've, I've read in a place or two that the uh, if you trim the feather off, that it'll last longer than than if you strip it off, but I've trimmed them and strip them off. I prefer to just strip them off because it it's a lot easier. It leaves the quill a lot cleaner once you strip it off. But uh, you can do however way you feel comfortable with. If you want to cut them off, just take a pair of scissors and cut it as close to the quill as you can. And uh, but I'll demonstrate how I strip the feather off now. <coughs> so 
So if you want to strip it off, you simply get it up here next to the end, hold the quill next to the tip as far as you can get, and you just start pulling the feather off. Sometimes you can get a hold of it and it goes, it'll go all the way to the end. Sometimes you have to go back. Once you get down a little way, it'll, it'll strip off pretty easily. And then to do the other side, you just do the same thing. Just hold the tip of the quill. On these primary feathers, the, the wide side will strip a lot better. But you just unzip it. There you go. And I've got one. I've got a couple here. This one. This one's a secondary quill. And it's got a little bit, bit of an arch in it, but not much. But uh, a lot of people hold them different. Some people hold them like a, sort of like an ink pen. I seen a picture of Jean Ritchie. She held hers like that and strum it. Then I seen some people that hold it like this. This is the way I prefer the, to hold it, to strum with. <clears throat> I just, I have a little problem with my hands and stuff that it bothers me to have to keep my, I like keeping holding mine this way so I can stay a little more level with the fretboard as opposed to this way I tend to dig into the fretboard a little more gets hooked on my strings and stuff but uh, everybody just have to experiment and find out their best favorite way to, to hold it and when you cut them off a lot of people will use the the big the big end. A lot of people use them for noters, and <clears throat> I prefer river cane for a noter. So I've actually never even tried it to use as a noter, but I imagine they would they would probably make a pretty good noter if you wanted to use it. But it'd be kind of hard to hold <laughs> this much feather, especially in the way that I strum with that much feather sticking out it'd be a little aggravating or even up that you'd poke your eye out <laughs> but the way I trim mine off is I just I like to have the tip of mine about the size of a match stem it gives me a little more sound but I simply take a pair of scissors and cut it off then I'll take this tip and I'll kind of take a piece of sandpaper and I'll round it <clears throat> but that's a little finer than I normally use but like I say normally I I get mine trim it back till it's about the size of a matchstick it gives me a little gives you more you don't get much sound out of it because it's so flexible out here you don't get very much sound if you leave it real small but <clears throat> there would be some circumstances I suppose it'd be better to to have it to leave it fine on the end that way if you wasn't wanting to get a lot of sound out of it but uh, you can trim it back a little bit just if you get two or three trim it back a little bit keep going until you get the sound that you want and for beginners if you're just starting out playing dulcimer period and um, playing the uh, with a feather a quill you can you don't it don't have to be a turkey feather you can use a chicken feather crow feather use a buzzard if you want to <clears throat> as long as you didn't get caught with it if it's an endangered buzzard <laughs> but uh, you anybody can just you can find a feather feathers in the park or whatever you wouldn't have to actually buy none just be aware of cleaning them real good when you bring them home but what I was getting at is if you're a beginner starting out 
I suggest learning to play with the end strum, that meaning you, you lead off your strumming with an end stroke instead of an out stroke. I started out playing, that's how I started out playing was with an out stroke on my strumming. So it made it a little, you don't, your melody string, your drone strings will override your melody string a lot using a, a quill at, to strum with. But some of the players that play with an end stroke lead off with a end strum they will their melody string sounds out a lot better and maybe you could get by with a super fine tip like that but I have to play with a little uh, coarser tip to get my melody string to sound out good when I'm uh, playing with a quill but uh, I hope this little video helped everybody and if you have any more questions you can message me or Look me up, Slate Creek Dulcimers on Facebook or Slate Creek Dulcimers on YouTube. Thanks a lot.